Non-governmental organizations are nonprofit organizations. They may participate in income generating activities, but they transfer this revenue backwards to their own activities. Income is not generated for profit. Non-governmental organizations do not have an organic link with the government. Most of their revenue is not from a permanent government source, and the government does not have any impact on its selection of mission and selection of managers. Non-governmental organizations have a democratic and participatory managerial structure. Managers are elected in a democratic way, not appointed. Budget management is also similarly democratic. Non-governmental organizations are transparent. Their budgets and annual reports are open to members and authorized persons to audit. Non-governmental organizations are generated by collective and volunteer initiatives. Civil organizations are formed by people with an amateur spirit coming together as volunteers and with a collective concept of improving society. One of the most important functions of NGOs is to be the spokesman of organized active citizens in the decision-making process. This undoubtedly constitutes the main purpose of NGOs in a participatory democracy. NGOs are vital organizations that deepen participatory democracy. Together with the public and government bodies, they directly take part in all the decision-making processes affecting daily life. NGOs, together with local administrators, constitute several platforms so as to strengthen participatory democracy. At the local level, municipalities are very important service providers. However, NGOs also make a contribution to social life at this level. Often, municipalities and NGOs collaborate on their work due to the nature of activities and civil initiatives. <laughs> Activities organized by the NGOs in Bayolu aim at working together for a more beautiful Bayolu. In 2004, these activities were transformed into a participatory platform, which included Bayolu municipality and NGOs who functioned under the name of Bayolu Local Civilian Collaboration Platform. This platform aimed to incorporate individuals and institutions from all fields of civil society. Approximately 300 NGOs, academic and craftsmen from Beilu were enrolled, working to achieve a common target. Beilu platform invited all possible participants, uniting them to create a more beautiful Beilu. <laughs> Bayolu platform worked together with municipalities in order to implement the commencement of projects and campaigns. These projects allowed for participatory democracy from the district to be united by their common interests at the local level. A civil organization should define the basis of its existence thoroughly at the stage of formation. Initially, it should recognize the problem it aims to overcome 
and determine its own place and role in solving these problems. As its top priority, the organization defines which role it would like to see for itself. This, in a sense, is the vision and image of the organization for its future. An organization that determines its vision, objective, working principles, and implementation strategies is an organization that definitely has completed the first step towards sound growth. When looking at unsuccessful attempts to form NGOs, it is often observed that definitional deficiencies at the initial stage are responsible, such as far-reaching objectives, insufficient understanding of the problems involved, and a limited vision of the management necessary to solve these problems. What forms the basis of NGOs is this strategy prepared for their daily functions. While one of the NGOs aims the same problem may prefer to train programs, another NGO may prefer to act by changing legal arrangements, and still another may prefer to organize signature campaigns and social actions. Activities in this direction will bring us nearer to our long-term target and will open up new vistas as we reach every single goal we seek. A center that employee mothers in Germany established to solve their problems and two different applications relating to the recycling of waste constitute examples about where a good strategy can take our work. The idea behind the Mother's Centre was created to solve the problems of unemployed women who were isolated from social life. The project provided employment for these women by looking after working women's children in Germany. At the end of the 1970s, the aim of Mother's Centres was to arrange activities in the newly established public sphere. These new spaces aimed to provide an environment for women to gain social support. By providing support and training, such as language and computer courses, Mother Centres aimed to eliminate unfavourable conditions caused by circumstances of modern life. The benefits of such projects were that they provided work opportunities as well as self-improvement and confidence for the mothers. Ministry of Family supported the Mother Centres by helping establish them in three different provinces in Germany. By 1990, the Mother Centres had 750 centres in 15 countries, which marked the overall success of the organisation. By utilising and circulating capital and funds provided by local organisations, the Mother's Centres avoided becoming a commercial body. The success story of the Mother's Centres is a good example of how a determined civil organisation that has a strong vision can sustain its activities. In 1992, Environment Protection Association initiated a project run by volunteers. Its main target group was low-income young women living in Mokatam district in Cairo. The idea of the association was to look for permanent solutions for women's economic and social problems, whilst also finding a solution to the environmental problems. They provided initiative at the local level to recycle solid wastes. The project made new paper by recycling waste paper previously collected. This project reached to a self-sustaining level of 40,000 revenue in 2003. This provided its success. 
To prevent harmful traditions such as early marriage and circumcision of women, the organisation promoted and raised awareness. In order to improve the skills and education of the workers, they established literacy, hygiene, English and computer courses. All these courses provided skills for women who were then able to earn money. Additionally, they also provided special support for newly married couples. This project was chosen as the best practice by UN Habitat in 2002. Recycling of solid waste is considered as a difficult problem in developing countries. There are numerous difficulties in terms of social as well as economic conditions for the workers employed in this informal sector. Their lack of organisation of solid waste collection is one of the most important problems. In 1989, a group of waste collectors established an organisation called Waste Collectors Cooperative in San Pablo. The aim of this cooperative was to solve problems in solid waste collection systems permanently. Copper Mayor's missions are to ensure the recycling of solid wastes. They implement various projects and training programs for companies in order to increase recycling practices after consumption, as well as to eliminate the problems of waste collectors, both social and economical. In 1994, Waste Collectors Cooperative was supported by the Ministry of Environment, who provided support for the trainings and seminars designed to make people conscious of recycling. Copamata was used as a model structure for solid waste collection systems in other countries. In Brazil, the cooperative had 80 members who were able to work more efficiently and have a decent salary and social security. This project is an example of how municipalities and civil organisations can work together for a solution to various problems. NGOs involve serving society and being nonprofit in their nature. Although it is a nonprofit organization, an NGO still has to provide pecuniary resources. In other words, to draw income in order to sustain its existence and carry out its activities and attain its objectives. These revenues, however, must always remain an instrument and never become an objective of NGOs. An alternative camp project being implemented by the Alternative Life Association is an ideal example of when a professional approach and volunteerism come together. It then becomes so easy to find resources and to carry out a successful project. Aslında dalmak özgürlüktür sloganıyla yola çıkarak engellilerin e, sualtı dünyasıyla buluşmasını planladığım bir e, dalış projesinin devamı olarak başladı. E, sadece bir sporun teknik özelliklerinin engellilere uygun hale getirilmesinden çok e, bütün bir engellilik sosyal olgusunun çözümüne yönelik e, toplumsal dönüşümün bir parçası olarak 
dalış ve sporu tercih etmiştim. Bu yüzden de altyapısını gönüllülük ve ücretsiz olma e, temeli üzerine oturttum çalışmanın. E, yüzlerce değişik engel grubundan arkadaş bu çalışmalara katıldı. Daha önce başlatmış olduğumuz Dalmak Özgürlüktür çalışmasına, Kızıldeniz Belgeseli'nin ve bütün o medyada yer alan görüntülerimizin dergilerde ve gazetelerde çıkan bizimle ilgili yazıların ve o güne kadar ki bütün katılımcıların geri bildirimlerinden oluşmuş o güven birikimi ve havuzunun sonuçlarını aldık ve bir takım sosyal sorumluluk duyarlılığı içinde olan, bu sorunun gerçekten aslında kanayan bir yarı olduğunun farkında olan bazı kişi kurumların bize inanmasıyla başladı her şey ve gelen bir takım desteklerle ve bağışlarla kira sorunlarımızı, işte iç dekorasyon, mimari sorunlarımızı çözdük. Tabii hepsi çok kendi içerisinde bir sürü sancılı süreçleri ama çözüldüğü zaman da çok büyük sevinçleri oluşturan aşamalardı. Eğer siz bir proje yapıyorsanız ve projenin içerisinde e, neredeyse bütçenizin yüzde ellisini o, o proje içerisinde yer alan e, personele ödememiz lazım. E, i̇şin içine tabii personel kavramı girince, maaş kavramı girince de e, aldığınız maaş kadar ve o maaşı alabildiğiniz sürece yaptığınız işler e, giriyor ve bizim o bildiğimiz ve baştan reddettiğimiz klasik metotlara, alışılagelmiş metotlara geri dönüyoruz ve ortaya sağlam bir çalışma modeli çıkmıyor. Dolayısıyla biz alternatif kampta kesinlikle personel kavramını ortadan kaldırdık. Bizim personelimiz yok, bizim gönüllerimiz var sadece ve projenin kurucusu ve yöneticisi olarak benden başlayarak herkes gönüllü olarak çalışmak zorundaydı ve bunu yaptığımızda alternatif kampın kuruluşu için hazırlamış olduğum tahmini bütçenin birdenbire %50 düştüğünü gözlemledik ve bu bize tabi e, otomatik olarak projenin sürdürülebilirliğini daha birinci kalemde sağlamış oldu. Çünkü tamamen insan emeği, heyecanı, bilgisi ve entegrasyonu üzerine kurduk projeyi. Bütün projenin e, sürdürülebilirliğini de bir yandan engelleri ücretsiz ağırlayarak, bir yandan gönüllü potansiyeli üzerine kurduyarak sadece bir konaklama bedde ihtiyaçlarının e, giderilmesi e, noktasına düşürdüğümüzden sponsorluk arayışlarımız ya da destek arayışlarımız kolaylaştı bizim. Destek olmak isteyen grupların, kişilerin ya da kurumların karşısına çok yüksek bütçelerle çıkmadığımız için ve sponsorluğu da, e, desteği de tek bir e, kurumun e, şemsiyesi altına e, sokmak yerine e, toplumun birçok katmanına yaymak gibi bir felsefeyle hareket ettiğimiz için de e, birden bir alternatif tam ailesi çok değişik katmanlarda büyümeye başladı. NGOs must design their activities as a step towards the world of goodness. Members of this world constitute the target audience. Therefore, activities related to the objectives of NGOs 
mean involvement with the lives of people outside of the NGO. The target audience is the group or groups which will be positively influenced by the project at its basic level. At first, it is important that the target group is to be characterized definitely. That is to say, how does the target audience suffer from the problem? What are its basic features and needs? What are the expectations from the project? Which role do they ask for the NGO to play in the project? In order to generate successful outcomes, it is imperative to answer these questions initially and determine the proper method of operation for NGOs. Alternative solutions can then be adopted and implemented practically by each target group in order to meet its specific goals. What is important is the extent to which the target audience can adopt these innovative and practical methods and perceive them as a part of their lives. The best way to do this is to initially establish characteristics of the target group and then present them to the group. The Happy Doctors project that Brazilian doctors developed for children and what Thai villagers did within the framework of the GEF small grant programs are excellent examples of application methods that meet the needs and features of the target group. In 1991, a hospital in Rio de Janeiro invited a theatre artist named Wellington Nugeria to organise an activity for the children in hospitals. Nugeria played with the children all day, visiting each bed while dressed as a buffoon. The effects of these joyous games on the patients were so positive that other hospitals started to offer work for him. This is how the Happy Doctors projects evolved, involving numerous street and theatre artists. In time, Happy Doctors spread to other cities of Brazil with the financial support provided by the private companies as well as the state. Quer saber o prontuário, porque nós não somos médicos. Então, não adianta, nós não temos esse conhecimento. Mas saber o contexto. Então ela fala, olha, essa criança aqui, ela tá traumatizada porque vai ser operada. Seria legal se vocês fossem acompanhá-la até a porta do centro cirúrgico com um pouco de música, e depois volta para o trabalho. No final do dia, tira a maquiagem e faz um relatório sobre o dia e assim que é o dia do palhaço no hospital. The main mission of the Happy Doctors project was to make the hospital a place that is not frightening for children. The project started with the hypothesis that laughing is one of the oldest techniques of treatment and is a way to solve problems. There has been more than 3,000 academic researchers who have observed that such treatment removes psychological troubles of children drastically. This project was also chosen as the best practice by UN Habitat in 1998 as well as 2000. The project now comprises of 37 buffoons and 20 professionals who work and do workshops and education studies with 800 doctors and health workers. Beyond helping to remove problems of the children, the Happy Doctors project became an example of successful projects in how to create, utilise and implement resources in the long term. Population growth and corresponding consumption have increased over the years, putting pressure on natural resources to a dangerous level. For this reason, society should take some measures to mitigate the negative effects of their development. One of the most effective ways to minimise human pressure on natural resources is to provide an alternative solution that makes possible sustainable use of natural resources. 
These alternative solutions have to be adopted and supported by the people who are dependent on the resources. In recent years, a number of projects were implemented to make better use of the natural resources in Thailand. The target groups of these projects were local people who use old traditional methods in their daily life. Projects were designed by taking opinions and support of villagers. One of these projects focused on villagers using fossil fuel for irrigation in Quan Quanon region. By means of this project, environment pollution decreased in their regions and villagers met with an endless energy resource that they were able to produce at a cost 70% lower than the previous techniques allowed. Another project focused on cooking techniques. Instead of traditional wood fire stoves, women started using solar energy based furnaces to cook and sell cooked catfish, which is a widely consumed food in the country. This exercise created an income resource for women who initially received financial support from UNDP GEF Small Grants Program. Previous practices of cooking on wood fires in open places led to health problems. Therefore, this project allowed the possibility of selling catfish in a more hygienic as well as cost-effective way. Another project supported by the UNDP GEF Small Grants Program in Thailand was based on the anaerobic treatment of animals excrement. Previously, there were important health problems for the 20 Houses village who dealt with cattle breeding and the excess of animal excrement in Papayam region. Villagers were convinced that biogas use was a solution to solve their problems as well as being able to provide a cheap energy source. This village established a biogas production unit under the support provided by a small supports program. By means of this simple biogas unit, villagers started to produce biogas and fertiliser from waste of animals. This was a very efficient way of solving a health problem.